Hello, welcome to another segment of We Would See Jesus. I want to thank all of our faithful subscribers um, <clears throat> because my wife and I have been involved in a move for so long and we were living out of boxes and then so um, our regular broadcast uh, was delayed. So we're hoping to get back on track. We feel like things are you know, achieving some sort of normalcy. Um, funny thing, you know, I still remember the first time I ever moved. Uh, I was 22 years old, moving out of my home. And uh, the whole process took one day. I just packed up my stuff, moved into an apartment, and unpacked, and I was done, ready to just keep on going. Now you get you get a little older, you start so man, where did I get all this stuff? And so we're going to have a massive garage sale <laughs> just to just to get rid of the, all this stuff. So, but anyway, thank you for your patience and uh, and your continuing subscribing of the channel. We appreciate that. Uh, today we want to talk toward the subject of the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead, and we're going to start in the book of John. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? And I want to repeat this to you. Do you believe this? So the setting of this scripture was Lazarus had passed away and uh, Jesus learned of it and he turned to his disciples and actually said, you know, Lazarus is sleeping and his disciples said, well, if he's sleeping, that's good. That's a good thing, right? So he can recover. He's sleeping. And he finally said, no, no. I mean, Lazarus is dead. And so this, uh, he came and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. And this is what Jesus was saying. I am the resurrection and the life. Um, he, he, he didn't say, I believe in the resurrection. That's not what Christ said here. Christ said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Which means that there is no resurrection outside of Christ Jesus. There is no way to live forever outside of Christ Jesus. Now, this is a huge, huge statement. And this statement reminds me of another uh, statement that Christ said when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. It's on that level. Um, and this is why Christ cannot be merely a good man, because there are a lot of people that said, oh, yeah, Jesus went around doing good. He was a good man. There, what good man, if he's merely a good man, could say things like this? I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to God except through me. That's a huge statement. And if he were merely a good man, he could not have said that and remained merely a good man. He was either something well over, extraordinarily over a good man, or he was just crazy, uh, or he was lying to people. I mean, those are the three places where you have to place Christ. He was either the Lord of all, is the Lord of all, or he was a liar. He was misleading people. If what he was sa said here was untrue and he knew it was untrue, he would be a liar or he would be a lunatic, you know, and um, so it's either Lord, liar or lunatic. If what he said was untrue, but he really believed it was true, uh, but it was untrue, he would be a crazy person. He would be bonkers. So this is why Christ Jesus was much more than just a good man. And he was much more than just a prophet. Uh, there are religions today <clears throat> that believe that Jesus was a prophet. What mere prophet ever said anything remotely close to this? Did Samuel? Did Isaiah? Did Daniel? Did Mohammed? What prophet can you point to that said, I am the resurrection and I am the life? 
So Christ Jesus is the author and the cause of the resurrection of the dead. He is the source of life, whether it's natural life, spiritual life, or eternal life. And he's Lord of the living, both in this present world and in the world to come. So I'm going to ask the question, what happens after we die? And there are three popular beliefs regarding what happens after we die. And I think it's helpful to examine each in accordance to the three parts of an individual. We all have a body. The body is what we see in the mirror, what we look at on a day-to-day -day basis. That's our body. Then we have a spirit. Our spirit is our life force. This is what gives and sustains our life. And then finally, we have a soul. A soul, that, that's our consciousness. This is really who we are. Our soul is who we are. That is us. It, it possesses all of our thoughts, all of our beliefs, all of our opinions, uh, all of our likes, all of our dislikes. Our soul is who we are. So the first belief regarding what happens after we die is death is final. So that means that your body dies, your spirit disappears, and your personal consciousness disappears into oblivion. So it's kind of like a toy, if you would, whose battery runs dead, they throw the toy into the, into the garbage, and the toy rusts away and decomposes over time. So the body dies, the spirit dies, and then the, your soul, the part of you that is you, ceases to exist. So that's one belief. Another belief is reincarnation. So that's where the human spirit is reborn into another life form. In other words, your spirit <clears throat> never dies. Your spirit, because it's life, it just moves on to another life form. So that would be like a set of batteries that are removed from a broken toy, but then are transferred to another working toy. So the body dies, the spirit transfers to another life form, but your soul is no longer intact. And this is why these people that believe this say that's why you don't remember uh, anything, but you will have moments of deja vu, where it's like, mm, I feel like I've been here before. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah, probably not. And then the third belief is resurrection. So Christianity, but also Islam and much of Judaism believe that God will resurrect and then judge each person. And he will either bring that person to heaven or he will send that person to hell. So if heaven, you'll have an eternal body. If hell, you'll be destroyed. So for the saved, that would be like a set of batteries that have ceased to work. And then they're replaced by indestructible batteries, and they're placed into an indestructible toy. So the body dies, and then we are given an immortal body. Our spirit, our life force, is still intact. Our consciousness transfers to that new body. Now, I understand that this sounds too good to be true. And there's an old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But this is true. This is true. That's what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I still remember Pontius Pilate, he, you know, he turned to Christ and said, what is truth? And here he's looking straight into the eyes of truth. And he could not see it. A lot of people today are that way. They can be staring right at or listening to this broadcast, but they cannot see truth. Um, understand that the Bible, we want, to, we want to hear what the Bible says on this subject, because the Bible is not only a history book, which it is, but it also gives us a clear understanding of the entire life cycle of this earth, as well as, well as what's going to happen in the afterlife. The Bible weighs in on this and teaches us what's going to happen. So in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, in the Amplified Version, who, by exerting that power which enables him even to subject everything to himself, 
will not only transform, but completely refashion our earthly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So when Christ resurrected from the dead, uh, he was given a glorious body, a body that will never die, but he still retained his consciousness. His own, who he is, was still intact. That's so important. He knew all of his disciples. He knew where he was. He knew who his mother was, who his brothers were. So he still retained his consciousness. <clears throat> so that's very important to know. Uh, another scripture, the book of 1 Corinthians says this, but tell me this, this is Paul writing, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying that there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless, and we apostles would all be lying about them, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we would be, we would, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. To have that hope that is just going to be worthless hope. That's a huge, huge scripture. Uh, so if there's no resurrection, then this entire human existence is entirely worthless. It's entirely empty. Mass murderers, Hitler, Mussolini, Lenin, Stalin, the worst criminals in history, Ted Bundy and rapists and child molesters, and I mean, the worst criminals that you can think of, Al Capone, they would end up in the same place as the godliest men and the godliest of women. There, that would just be unfathomable that that could ever happen, that to live godly in this life meant nothing. No, that's not true. The godly will put on eternal life. And in fact, in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, but we're going to drop down to verses 51 through 55. Paul also writing said, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, we shall not all be dead. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? In fact, the Bible also says that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. We will no longer be subject to illness. We will no longer be subject to disease or old age or death. We will have glorified bodies like that of our Lord Jesus, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. All the things you don't like about yourself probably won't exist any longer. It's like, my nose is too big. Well, your nose won't be too big. We will have an immortal body that will be perfect. And we will live eternally with our consciousness intact. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? We're going to live 
throughout eternity. And I want to give you an illustration of what eternity is going to look like. And this is depicted by uh, uh, David Lodge. He wrote, think of a ball of steel, a solid ball of steel, as large as this world. And a fly comes and rests on it once every million years. When that ball of steel is rubbed away by the friction caused by the fly's legs and wings, eternity has just begun. That's what I have for you today. God bless you all, and we will see you next week. God bless you.